Let's have a look at how to draw walls. Uh, when we're drawing a house, for instance, if we already know the shape of the house that we're trying to draw, rather than drawing the outline in line weight or line work, a single line, what would be better is if we were drawing the actual thickness of what the wall should be. Let's say, for instance, that's going to be a uh, cavity brick. So let's try to find where that is. Uh, we'll use this one, WT. 09 wall type, I think that is number 9, cavity brick 270 mil. Now when I draw, look at the moment it's got it set to outside face. When I draw, the, the wall isn't the same. Uh, it's got a thickness and we can see that it's not just a two-dimensional line. It's a, it's a box or a thickness of the wall. But there's a thick line and there's a thin line. Now the thick line represents the reference line. What's important to understand in this case that it's saying that the outside face is being used as the reference line. Now we can change that. We can change that to the center or to the inside face and we can do that while we're drawing or before we start drawing. We can also flip it. If for instance we leave it the way it is at the moment and we have it with the outside face, then that means we're drawing from the outside face. Now depending on which way we're drawing, if, if I want my house to be in this space here, then that would mean I'm drawing in a clockwise direction. So let's just draw something. It doesn't have to be fantastic. I'm not even going to measure it, in fact. So I'm just going to make a shape of a very ugly looking house. And to close this, I'll just make sure I'm a bit more precise. And when I select all these walls, you'll see that the black dots or the nodes and the thicker green line are always consistently on the outside of the wall. Now, outside or inside doesn't really matter, but as long as it's consistent. Now, of course, when we're using different types of composites, which is what this wall is made from, composite types, and we find these under options, element attributes, composites. There is often an inside and an outside. We see this wall when we zoom in far enough, although it said it was 270 cavity brick, it's actually not, it's lying. What it is, is 110 mil, 50 mil, 110, and then it's 5 mil and 10 mil. And because I've looked at this before, it's a furring channel and plasterboard. So in fact, it's 270 cavity plus furring channel and plasterboard. So in fact, it's not 270 cavity, it's now 285. So therefore, drawing this the right way around is very important because if we were drawing this backwards, then the plasterboard and furring channel would be on the outside of the building. Let's say, for instance, though, that when you're designing it or when you're drawing it, you don't want the outside to be the reference. Maybe you want the inside to be the reference. But before we look at that, we could also draw with the outside as the reference. But we could flip it around. So instead of now drawing in a clockwise orientation, we could draw in an anti-clockwise orientation. Just by changing or flipping the reference line. Now, Archicad in the past has always said you must draw in an anti-clockwise direction because that's the way it worked. This ability now for us to flip the orientation is quite useful. Uh, it really just depends on how you want to draw. Sometimes it makes more sense to draw clockwise, sometimes anti-clockwise, depending on what you're trying to reference or line up. You note that either of those options Either of those options still allowed us to have our plasterboard and our furring channel on the inside of this building. Let's just do that the other way around now. Wall. Now we're going to change to our inside face. So therefore we should be very aware of what we're doing. And of course this time we're drawing clockwise again. If we want to change that we need to flip back. And now we're drawing in a anti-clockwise direction. But we're using the inside of our wall as the reference line. And you note that because we said it was inside face, we still have the plasterboard on the inside. 
So just be aware, are you drawing inside outside? Are you drawing it the right way round? And does the wall that you're using matter whether it's inside or outside? Let's have a look at why. If I select these walls and go into the settings, then I'm going to go down to my model, we'll see that there are surfaces and on a wall there's three different types of surface. There's a reference side face, or that maybe that could be an outside face. There's an inside face, and there's an edge face. So the sides, top and bottom, or the ends, the top and the bottom. And so therefore it's very important that we understand what is inside and what is outside of any given wall. Now that doesn't matter too much when it's a simple shape, but when it is a composite or when it is a uh, custom profile, that matters very much what type it is. Now what do we do with walls? The advantage of walls is it's drawing us a line thickness straight away. So that's one advantage. The other thing is that it is giving us a three-dimensional object. I'm not sure how big I'm drawing, but these walls look very short. Let's make them a bit taller. And let's make sure that the story that we're drawing on is tall enough as well. Yep, that's good. So here we have walls. Let's say I wanted one of these walls to be curved. I could have drawn it curved or I could change it to be curved after the fact. Now if I want to edit it, it's very important that I refer to the reference line. So again, depending on how you're designing or how you're drawing, think about which side is referenced inside or outside. It's not something you want to go changing later because it does get tricky. What happens if we did that? Look at the size of the shape of this slab, or sorry, of these walls. What happens if I change inside to outside face? It flips it because the reference line remains the same and it flips it one way or the other. What happens if we leave it the way it was and now flip this? It does it as well. But one is changing the inside face and one is flipping it. So we want to be very careful when we place, where we place, how that works. Now let's say I want to put a, a concrete floor into this space. I don't need to trace the area again. I could use my magic wand and place a slab there. Let's say I want my slab to be lined up with the outside of my walls. I can use my offset all edges to extend it to the outside. Let's say I want to put a door or a window in my wall. All I need to do is select an object from my library, a door or window, choose where I want to place it, click and there it is. Maybe I want to not have one, maybe I want to move it, maybe I want to have a few. Let's go drag multiple copies. And now I've got three windows. What happens if we want to put a door into a curved wall? Now this gets a little bit tricky. How does it work? You'll note that most of our doors and windows don't allow us to have curved doors and windows because curved doors and windows are really silly to be honest. So what it would do is it would make a straight line depending on how large the area is. How do we finish this off? Let's make another new story. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Create a new story. Set above, which will be our roof. Let's use a roof tool. We're just going to make a, an automatic one here. Magic wand. Oh, let's just make the settings are right. It's a bit high. Let's change that to 20. Magic wand. Apply to the outside edge of my face. Let's have a look what our crazy building looks like in 3D. There we go. So with just a few clicks of a button, I now have a three-dimensional building. And from that three-dimensional building, I could make elevations. I could see what it's going to look like. Draw an elevation. View that elevation. Here we're seeing vectorial hatching, which means we're seeing the brick, which is what the wall is made from. We're also seeing shadowing, so we're seeing how the uh, the sun at any given time of day, any day of the year, is going to shadow the windows. Now this can be very, very useful for determining the solar access into your own design and also how your building overshadows adjacent properties as well. 
and we can do that all within ARCHICAD very, very easily. So you should never, ever have to draw shadow diagrams by hand again.